Welcome to the Jill on Money podcast. It is Thursday, November 5th. And no, we don't have a winner yet. We are in animated suspension, at least at this taping. It is 410 on Wednesday afternoon. So what I can tell you is that markets roared higher today. And it was kind of interesting because there was some notion that as soon as this thing gets settled, markets are going to go up. Well, we're not settled. So what's going on? I think there's a combination of factors. One is that there is some consensus, at least, that this may not go on for more than a few days. That could be wrong, could be right, but that's sort of what the street thinks. And the other aspect is that there was no blowout either way. Looks like we've got divided government. And so regardless of who gets to ascend to the presidency, either President Trump for a second term or Joe Biden, that you will have a split House, a split Senate, And usually divided governments tend to kind of go slow and maybe not everything's going to get done at once. I'm still a little worried about when they get to the stimulus, but that's just me. So as always, we like to encourage you to take a deep breath. (sighs) Don't get sucked into the news cycle. If you have a financial question, just give us a holler. Our email address is askjill at jillonmoney.com. Okay, let's get to your questions. This is from Gerald, who listens to our show in California. And he actually said, I caught your show a couple of weeks ago on a trip to Ohio, and you had a guest talking about mortgages. Okay, here's the question. My issue is, I just completed making extra payments on my mortgage to get the principal below 78%, so I could get the private mortgage insurance automatically removed, and that was per the original loan agreement. Okay. So, um, original lender sold the mortgage to another company, which then went out of business. Oh God, the loans are handled by a debt collection agency due to the bankruptcy. Now they're saying that the PMI will not be removed until the original date, which was November, 2022, regardless of reaching that 78%. My suspicion is they want me to reappraise because then they can change the level to 60% a loan to value for PMI. I'm waiting to hear from a manager at the collection agency. If I don't get a PMI removed, I'm considering the CFPB. Any ideas on what to explain to the manager the next step if they still won't remove my PMI? Thank you, Gerald. Hmm. That is a stinky situation, Gerald. Here's one question. I don't know the other parts of your life, but is it possible that perhaps it might be worth it for you to consider that you could actually refinance this mortgage anyway? I don't know. I'm just wondering. I don't know. I mean, if you're willing, if you're staying in the house, is that something? Because, you know, it's very difficult when you've got this other company in the middle of it that doesn't really, you know, it just seems very complicated to me. So number one, I would explore whether an actual refi makes sense. Number two, I would just say, hey, I have the original documentation and this, you know, when you're talking to the manager and says, I'm now below the threshold. I now have 22% equity in the home. I want my PMI removed. Otherwise, I'm going to make a complaint to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and to uh, my state regulator. Just go to your state uh, website and they'll sure you'll be have a nice complaint area and go from there. Dana, another real estate question. Dana writes, my husband and I are selling two rental properties shortly. We do not want to do a 1031 exchange. Okay. So a 1031 exchange for everyone listening means that if you've got rental property and you sell the the properties and then roll the amount that you get into another rental property, you can defer your taxation, but they're not going to do that. So I just want to tell you that's what's going on. Okay. Dana wants to know, can you please explain how capital gains tax works? Okay. Um, We make about $100,000 jointly. We have a low adjusted gross income because we max out our retirement accounts. The rental property taxation is a little different. So the question is that you're right. She says, uh, if I'm married filing jointly, from my read, the first $80,000 is taxed at 0%. And then from 80,000 to just under a half a million dollars, you have a 15% tax that's applied to the gains. Now, here's the problem. (laughs) So that's the capital gains, but you've also been taking depreciation on this rental property. And you'll see that in your tax returns. And if you have been treating this rental property 
in a correct way, you will have been claiming a certain amount of deductions based on that. You then have to recapture. So in addition to capital gains, you then have to recapture the depreciation that you've taken for all the years that you've owned these rental properties. So my suggestion, Dana, is for you to talk to an accountant, uh, a CPA, whoever did your taxes and help you estimate just how much tax is going to be due on these. Okay. All right. Okay. Here is Maribel who writes, I've often heard you on CBS this morning and I appreciate your viewpoint. However, today on October 30th, I kept thinking there's nothing here for low income families to do during pandemic. I realize you're a financial planner. I'm not a financial planner anymore. I'm just certified that way. Maybe you're looking at the lowest income earners or unemployed is not something you do, but maybe you could think about resources or solutions for them. Hey, um, I did do, say that. I did say that you should ask for help. I mean, I, you may not have watched that segment exactly very closely. So what I'd like you to do is go back and look at that segment. It's on our website because during that segment, I said you ask for help. And in extreme cases, you consider bankruptcy, you use the state systems that are out there. And so I agree that there are, and I think that we have done a really good job reporting on this, that, that there are people who are in desperate shape amid the pandemic. But that particular segment did give people um, some options. And, you know, there's, there's not much more that you can do except for ask for that help. Um, Okay. Robert wants to know what I think about Fisher Investments. You know, you should compare it with lots of alternatives. So if you're going to look at Fisher Investments, then you should also look at other folks who do the same thing, or potentially you could look at robo-advisors that provide not just money management, but also some customized financial advice. And those uh, robos are Betterment or Vanguard has the personal service advisor, Schwab Intelligent Portfolio, and uh, see what you can do. You know, th th those those are definitely good options for you, but try to make sure that you compare apples to apples. All right. All right. That's it for the show. And as always, I know these are crazy days and we really do thank you for sharing part of your day with us. We will be in your feed tomorrow morning. We'll keep answering questions. We'll keep doing what we do. That's uh, the best way to cope with everything going on. If you have a financial question, you can always email us, ask Jill at jillonmoney.com. If you'd like to join us on the program, please make a note and say, hey, I want to be on the air with you. Mark will arrange it. As always, just go to the Jill on Money website. If you've got any questions that are bubbling up, it's very easy to do, jillonmoney.com. Wash your hands. Wear your masks, maintain your physical distancing, and try to put your hands metaphorically on someone's back. Someone needs your hands on their back today. I'm telling you that right now. It's going to make you feel better. All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <music>